Hey everyone, it's Will, Gamer Dad, with another video for you. So in tonight's episode of Should You Summon, we're going to discuss the four new banners in our second anniversary update 2.6.2. Uh, there are two paid banners, as well as two uh, free uh, banners. So let's cover the two paid banners first. So um, we have the second anniversary um, banner. And in the Fateful, of course, it guarantees a 5-star. And it's actually a 5-star from the uh, list based on the popularity vote for the second anniversary. Now, I was actually wrong yesterday. I thought it was only up to the top 20. But essentially, they chose the 20 most popular characters other than the um, you know storyline characters. So, of course, my waifu Suzette. Haha. <laughs> as well as other fan favorites. There's uh, Hismina, there's Mariel's, of course, uh, Iska, Radius. I'm just going to scroll really quickly down, um, and we're going to just take a look at the odds here. So you can see a lot of really powerful units, a really good mix of popular and powerful characters. So, um, you know, I don't have to read out each list for you, but it is split up, and some characters are a little bit more popular or easy to get than others. So for, uh, for example, um, Tozuki, Tiramisu, um, or Tiramis, um, Lily and so on and so forth. And of course, this one actually has a rare chance to get a point, a zero one chance of getting a four star Melissa. Now let's bring up the free to play uh, version of that. So it does have uh, the same characters, although uh, in, in terms of odds, for example, you will not have access to Melissa even in a rare um, chance. So I, for free to place, we only get up to Hardy, but otherwise uh, the odds look the same, um, very similar. Obviously, you don't get the maximum uh, guaranteed 5-star on the 10th pull. However, um, I did add up the rates, and it is about 5% rate uh, for a 5-star out of, uh, you know, as opposed to a 3.6%. So very similar to the first anniversary and the summer campaign anniversary banner, where um, essentially 5-star rates are about 50% higher. So um, if you're wondering whether or not you summon, really, just take a look at the list see how many of those 20 units you can use and if you like at least half of them or more or if you can really use half of them or more then go ahead and summon because hey how often do we get upgraded banners uh, especially of units both relatively new and sometimes old as well i mean just think of all the lunatic characters mystere hilili um of course victor um, there's a few other awesome ones in there, and for those who don't have Mayumfa, you know, Felmina, there's a lot of great characters in there. So the only downside is, if you've been playing for a while, you might have the majority of these characters, and then you really have to uh, ask yourself whether or not you want to roll the dice and use these stones on this banner, or for example, either on the Melissa banner, or some of the other more powerful characters banners that are coming in the future. Um, if you're wondering for me, usually I do at least one 10 pull on the anniversary banner. I can't help myself from summoning on an uprated banner, being that it's very rare to get a 50% up rate. Um, but otherwise, you know, if you do have the majority of th uh, these, I would opt out. Same with the faithful. I mean, if you do, uh, if you are missing more than half the units, go ahead and use the faithful. Why not? A lot of the characters are new and very, very powerful. But if you do have the majority of characters, save your paid stones and use them for uh, future paid uh, banners because you never know what uh, WFS is going to release in the future as well, right? So, um, you know, there are plenty of opportunities to spend paid stones. We all know this. Uh, otherwise, not much else to say in that case. Now, of course, there are two additional banners and these are the mo more hyped ones. So the Fateful banner, for example, for our global first, Melissa. Flat 10% chance as usual, and you can see that uh, all the most recent units, including Hina, are available as a uh, lower rate um, for the uh, 10th pull, of course. And then we also have the uh, free-to-play version of Melissa. Now, I tried this a couple of times, and actually the screen was broken, but this is a split banner with Primaya. So 0.8% uh, chance for a 5-star, 0.4% chance for a 4-star. Uh, both units are available in equal chance. And again, uh, we don't have access to some of the newer units. I don't think Heenan's in this one. However, um, you can still get up to Hardy. Uh, I could be wrong on that, so uh, correct me if I'm wrong. So, uh, first of all, in case you missed up on my update video yesterday, uh, Melissa is a very fast win Crystal Katana user that has a spe special mechanic. At the start of battle, if she's on your front line, she just deploys Flash Strike Stance. 
So essentially, it's an Omni Zone that increases the damage and AF bar charging of Slash, Blunt, Pierce, and Magic attacks. That is basically all attacks, so it functions like a zone for any combination of units you want to put on your front line for the very first turn. You can mix and match your most powerful units and do a one turn AF, uh, or obviously you can also boost for a two turn AF, but you know, we already have other mechanics and ways to do that. On top of that, she has support capabilities such as applying 50% crystal and wind resist down, 30% physical resist down, she boosts your team's crit damage by 30% while boosting her own crystal and wind attack by 50%. So she has her self boost, she has some team support, and obviously she can apply multiple debuffs to help your DPS. Now her two main attacks are Crystal AoE that applies a new mechanic called Break. I, I, I call it short for Armor Break to be honest. Uh, it allows the next hit to do double damage and so it's only one hit. So if you have multi hits, I'm not sure if it allows double damage and all those double hits. Now in Lunatic modes, uh, Crystal units such as her do the same move twice. So it'll apply Break and then do massive damage immediately. Um, being that um, that same move that is spammed does get increased damage if the enemy has break status, and that's unique to her. Now her wind AoE applies the crystal wind physical resist down, so it will help your wind DPS do a ton more damage, and obviously help her do some extra damage as well. So should you summon for her? Well, it really depends on your roster and needs, as you will show with most um, you know, summon videos. The ability to create a one-turn powerful AF with any mix of units allows for a lot greater team flexibility as long as the enemy boss is vulnerable or weak to those attacks. Now this can really help fill a lot of holes for you if you're uh, missing a bunch of units. So you know if you only have one or two powerful units and they're not all slash units for example, you won't be using a slash zone. However, this uh, zone that enhances all types of attacks will really allow you to do a powerful turn one AF. Now, if you have access to powerful teams of all four elements and all three weapon types with zone setters, this uh, feature may not be as attractive to you since you can most likely do a great two turn AF already and end any boss that doesn't have an HP stopper. If you use the first turn to build your AF bar instead and don't activate your AF, it won't be any better than using a fast unit to swap in and set your preferred zone since your other free uh, frontline units will do hits and build the AF bar under your zone. Now in terms of her DPS, it's really too soon no it's really too soon to know exactly what kind of damage she can really do. I mean, uh, you'd have to play test that, and on that front, I'm not able to determine if she can be used as a frontline DPS, uh, such as for example AS Foreign or some of the other powerful units. But the fact that she has access to two elements and both attacks have AoE uh, capabilities and they look pretty decent make her uh, relatively attractive. As a support. Since she can boost your wind team's DPS through wind resist debuff and her own damage through her own self boost wind, uh, you know, elemental, it is decent as well. Keep in mind, however, that Azami, even as a free character, has 30% wind resist debuff, uh, stackable up to three times for a total of 60%. Even Morgana can boost your entire wind team's DPS with wind high booster. So, a lot of her value will depend on how much DPS she can do. Of course, she's the only unit so far that can establish flash strike stance, so I'm sure that with some experimentation, there might be some new and crazy powerful strategies that only she can do. But since Global is the first to get her, we will only truly know once people summon for her and try her out. Now for those who are curious, my free to play friend, who actually contributes some of his ideas to my channel and summon guides, has 15k stones and is likely to hold off on summoning on this banner. Uh, too, many, too many variables for him to consider a must-have unit. Like me, he considers AS Rosetta a much higher priority. As for myself, I'm undecided. I might try a couple of 10 pulls if I feel lucky, um, but you know, she's definitely an interesting unit. Realistically, however, I would consider this more of a luxury pull than a necessity. Anyways, let me know in the comments below uh, how you feel about both these banners, uh, if you are planning to summon, and uh, if you'd like to, share some results with us as well. Thanks for watching! We'll see you next time.